Hey, have you ever got bored of living in a city? The ear splitting noise, the smoky polluted air, and the hectic lifestyle that squeezes every last drop of energy out of you. When you just wanna go far away, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, somewhere pristine and carefree. No deadline, no 95 job, no pollution, just you and the nature. All right, let's come back to the reality. Well, it's such a pity that I can't bring you there virtually, but let me invite you on a journey to explore an online community of people who share that same desire with us. So, let's go. Bỏ phố về rừng is a public Facebook group of around 190,000 members. And as the name suggests, the group is for those who want to Bỏ phố về rừng or leave the city for the forest. Bỏ phố về rừng has been an increasingly hot topic over the past few years in Vietnam, especially when the pandemic COVID-19 hits the country. And different from the past, where the idea of coming back to the countryside is often related to the elderly, this trend is becoming more and more popular among young people. So, as a young Vietnamese who also considers herself to be a nature lover, I decided to choose this Facebook community of Bo Phu Vi Rừng for my final project to see what's going on there. And here is what I found and want to talk about. First is how ex-urban members craft their online presentations in a group to get both mental and financial benefits. And second, what is the non-spatial city forest dichotomy? And what is Bo Phu Vi Rừng, really? My study bases on some theoretical frameworks and ideas to gain an insightful look into the topic. First is Geary's idea about thick description. To dig deeper into the layers of meaning of the content mediated, as well as the CD forest dichotomy. I also used the self-presentation theory by Goffman to investigate how members craft their online presentations in a group to achieve the results they want. And this research also adopts Michael's idea about anti-urbanism, that anti-urbanism is a phenomenon not only defined by space, but also related to the mindset, and thus could be found within urban areas. This approach towards anti-urbanism helps to explore the non-spatial aspect of the city forest dichotomy in this group. So I did this study mainly using participant observation. After joining the Facebook group of Bo Phu Vi Rừng, I looked through all the sections from about, featured, and all the way to the media to get a general understanding about this community. And after that, I took a close look at the discussion section and noted down what I found interesting in both the content posted and the comment sections. And then, I repeated the procedure of observing the discussion going on, but this time with the theoretical framework in mind to see what is behind those that I found interesting. Và đừng để đời chỉ là những chuỗi ngày được chấm công Mình cứ như nắng hạ nhưng trong lòng thì chấm đông yeah. Nếu mà mệt quá giữa thành phố sống chồng lên nhau Cùng lắm thì mình về quê, mình nuôi cá và trồng thêm rau <cười> Life is not a dream. That's what they say when talking about the rural lifestyle choice. It is not as easy and carefree as many people think. In fact, they have to cope with many problems. Many get to face up with the intense disapprovals from their families. Or many agree that doing the farming work is very labor-intensive, yet risky and hard to make good money. 
So besides the obvious benefits of living in the countryside, like a healthy living environment or good food safety, joining a digital community helps them to deal with the challenges easier. The interaction with other members gives them extra motivation to keep going with their decision of the entire urbanism movement. This has been confirmed by many members themselves, and in order to get that connection, one of the ways is what Goffman called the impression management, which is basically a conscious or subconscious process in which people attempt to influence the perceptions of other people about a person, object, even by relegating and controlling information in social interaction. So let's look at this example. Many times members quote these two lines from the famous poem Nyan or Lizard by Nguyen Bình Khiêm in their posts. Ta dại, ta tìm nơi vắng vẻ, người khôn, người đến chốn lao sao. Roughly translated as, I'm foolish, I seek quiet places, smart people, they seek busy places. I find this so interesting because people capture their alone moments enjoying the nature and then share them in the group and say that, ooh, I seek quiet places. And I'm like, you mean Facebook is a quiet place? I mean, this kind of sharing actually attracts a lot of attention, interaction and communication with other members. So what we can see here is that they are using the poem not for the meaning of the, of the poem itself, but for the connection of the poem to the shared identity of the group. You know, leaving the city for the forest is pretty similar to going from a busy place to a quiet place. And therefore, Using this poem helps their presentation in the group feels really fit in. However, the act of posting is not just simply about seeking for some support from people that they have never met before. Many posts actually have the promoting incentives behind them. But first, let me give you a little bit of the context here. Administrative rules of the group say that any explicit sales posts and shared links from other pages will not be accepted. This group is not a trading market, it says. You can share with others about what you have, like lands or farm produce, but share as a friend with the real products of yours. And this is basically what members do to sell their products. They try to give the impression that I'm not trying to sell anything, I'm just sharing my stories. And they do that by projecting the online presentation with a type of narrative that resonates with other members based on the group identity. So let's look at this example of a man promoting his agar wood bracelet business. The author first starts off with a story of how he came to decide to leave the city, all the challenges he faced after making this decision, and why he does what he's doing right now. With this kind of narrative, other members know exactly what business the author is running. They know the story and the journey behind it. And what is even more important is that this type of story easily evokes their resonation and support since it speaks to them and relates to them, relates to their shared identity. So this makes other members more likely to trust and thus buy the product. And you can see the promoting incentive very clearly here. These are the six recent posts that he published in a group, which is basically the same story but paraphrased or told in different ways and I call this type of narrative the personal journey and there are several posts of other members using this personal journey narrative to promote their products as well. And next is another even more implicit promoting narrative that I call the everyday update. The promoting incentive in this type of post is so vague 
that at first I didn't realize them at all. For example, this is a post with a caption saying, A little corner in my garden. Nice. Seems like just a friendly author sharing moments of their everyday life. But I noticed that the intention is not simply about sharing for fun. When I read the comment sections, and some members asked if the author knew where to buy the seeds of those flowers, and the author would be like, I have, DM me please. And after that, I went checking all the content that the author has posted in a group. And you know what? I found several posts of her with this particular everyday update narrative. And unlike the personal journey narrative with motivational stories, this narrative here is very short and simple, basically sharing a moment of their everyday life, just like the way they share it with their friends. It is even unknown whether that product present in the picture is available for sale or not. Sharing their products as a friend rather than a seller diminishes the fear of cheating or unsanitary products among other members. It gives the impression about the author that, oh, you happen to like it, and I happen to sell it. And here are some examples using this type of narrative. And with all these types of narratives, the photographs play a vital role in promoting the products, especially the second type of everyday update when the images speak for themselves. If the products are fruits or flowers, photographs often show them when still on the trees or when being picked by the owner in the garden. And if the products need further processing, Authors will also provide images or videos illustrating that process. These photographs bring a sense of trust by showing người thật, việc thật, like real people, real thing, refers to the transparency and honesty of owners about their product. Nhiều thuốc, nhiều thuốc mẹ em khóc mắc lệ nhòa bố anh thì đi lại còn mẹ anh gọi điện thoại đến từng nhà yeah. nhiều ngày rồi mình không về không, về. không liên lạc được gì cả. Now before we end this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Balfourian phenomenon and a non-spatial aspect of the city forest dichotomy. According to my observation in this group, it has many many urban members and they are the ones who say they wish to live in rural areas but have not done that yet. They love the living environment in rural areas but are not prepared to cope with the difficulties of such a lifestyle and can't give up on the city yet. So joining the group, seeing other members' lives gives them a chance to experience their dream digitally without having to actually do that and go through all the hurdles of living in a rural setting. And what appeals to people is not the forest or the rural area itself, but its symbolic meaning that relates to peace, freedom, which is contradictory to the idea of a city as a hectic place of frustration and pollution and disconnection. So the city forest dichotomy extends beyond the spatial meaning. They want to to leave the city for the forest, but it's not like leaving the physical city to go to the physical forest. It's rather like wanting to escape the mental frustration often related to the city to go for the peaceful state symbolized by the forest. And even though leave the city for the forest train has only been popular in Vietnam over the past few years, it has a long story and can be traced back to the day of Nguyen Bình Khiem or similar figures like him in the history. 
when a highly ranked functionary in feudal society left behind all the fame and power to come back to their homeland to live a simple and minimal life, yet full of freedom and peace. And due to the advancement of technology, the very nature of rural area is changing every day, which makes the experience of coming back to a rural area is no longer what it used to be in the day of Living Kim. But maybe deep down, the very goal and purpose remains relatively the same, which is to achieve what they consider as peace, and in this case, the rural lifestyle with natural setting. Therefore, I think the entire urbanism in this community represents the pursuit for peace rather than a hostility towards the physical city itself. So, do you want to bỏ phố về rừng? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.